Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the using security zones in the CLI Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. In this example, there's a few things I want to point out. VSRX1 is in the middle here and that's what we will be configuring. And VSRX1 is connected to the internet through the internet zone, which uses the Gigi000 interface. And then VSRX1 is connected to the servers through the servers zone and uses the Gigi001 interface to connect to the syslog server and the Gigi002 interface to connect to the email server. And then lastly, VSRX1 is connected to the user1 device through the users zone. And, you know, in a real world scenario, there's probably more than just one user, but for a lab setup like this, that's okay. And it uses the Gigi003 interface to do that. And then let's talk about the criteria for the example. We need to configure VSRX1 with security zones using the CLI. We want to configure the users zone and we want to configure the users to be able to access the VSRX1 device using the NTP protocol. And we'll do that by setting up host inbound traffic. And then in the servers zone, we have Gigi001, which is connected to the syslog server. That needs ping, NTP, and SSH enabled for host inbound traffic. And then Gigi002 needs to have ping and NTP enabled only, not SSH, just ping and NTP. And Gigi002 connects to the email server in the server zone. Then in the internet zone, we need to enable IKE and HTTPS for host inbound traffic. And that might be a scenario to where you're using something like the Pulse client for remote access VPN. Because if you do that, you do need to enable IKE and HTTPS in the zone to have the Pulse VPN work correctly for remote VPN access. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to make sure these zones function properly. So we want to configure a basic security policy that permits traffic coming from the internal network to the internet. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI and get started. All right, so here is the CLI for VSRX1. Let's get into configure mode. Then we want to move to the edit security zone hierarchy. And from here, we can configure the different security zones. So let's configure the internet zone to begin. And remember, that's going to use the Gigi00 interface. And then we need to configure the host inbound traffic, system services, IKE, and then HTTPS. And the security zone, let's go to servers. And it's going to be two different interfaces here. But recall these two different interfaces require a different setup as far as host inbound traffic. So what we can do to streamline things is we first can configure the zone level host inbound traffic. Do ping, NTP, and SSH. And then we can add the interface, the Gigi001 interface. And then when we add the Gigi002 interface, we can set the host inbound traffic, system services, and set the parameters that we just want for that interface. Just ping and NTP. So if we look at that, you'll see that for the zone we have system services, ping, NTP, and SSH. And that'll apply to everything in the zone unless there is a more specific configuration. That's how Junos works. And so that zone-based configuration for ping, NTP, and SSH for the host inbound traffic applies only to Gigi001. Because with Gigi002, we configured host inbound traffic for ping and NTP for system services. Gigi1 gets the three system services and Gigi2 only gets those two system services. And then last but not least, let's go ahead and configure the user zone. And that just has the Gigi003 interface. And that just needs NTP for the system services. So jump up one and then look at the entire output and you can see that everything is configured correctly. And so the last thing we want to do is configure a security policy to permit traffic from the internal networks to the internet zone. And this is gonna be a lot easier if we do a global policy. If we do a zone-based policy, we are going to have to create a few different policies. And with a global policy, we can get away with just doing one. So this is gonna make it easier for our learning byte. Uh, keep in mind, you may want to configure zone-based security policies in your network.
I want to match from zone, and it's going to be from zone users, servers. And I'm using the open and close brackets there to specify that all in one line. I could, if I wanted to, just say match from zone users, hit enter, match from zone servers, hit enter. It would result in the same configuration. To zone internet. Source address is going to be any. Destination address is going to be any. Application is going to be any as well. Then we're going to permit it, permit the traffic. If we look at that, we can see it's coming from any source address, any destination address with any application, but we're specifying a match criteria of from the users or servers zone going to the internet zone. Let's commit that configuration, and then we can look at a few operational commands to verify things. Show security zones will show us the security zones. We'll see the actual zones, their names, which interfaces are bound to them. Now, you're not going to see the host inbound traffic here with this command. What you have to do to see the host inbound traffic is you have to actually look at the extensive output of an interface command. Look at giggy 0 extensive. And that's a lot to parse through. So let's actually skinny that down a little bit. Let's just search for NTP. That's right. We're not looking for NTP with Gigi00. We're looking for something like IKE. And we can see here, allowed host inbound traffic, HTTPS, and IKE. And so we do Gigi1, extensive, match. Now we do have NTP here. And we can see with Gigi001, we have ping, NTP, and SSH. Perfect. Okay, so let's look at Gigi002. We should have two protocols enabled. And we do ping and NTP, or rather two services, not protocols. And if we look at Gigi3, it should just be nothing but NTP. And that's perfect. That's what we want to see. And the last thing we can do is we can do the show security policies command. And you can see here that we have our policy that is configured. We can see it's coming from zones, users, and servers, and going to zones, internet just the internet zone in that regards. And we can see the action is permit, it's matching on any for all the other parameters. And so things look as expected. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we configured security zones using the CLI, and then we verified those security zones or the configuration of those security zones using the CLI. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.